We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. As with most elections, it all comes down to demographics, whether it's suburban white women in Virginia decrying the lack of input in school subjects or hipsters in Seattle finding their favorite coffee bar demolished in mostly peaceful but fiery protests. It all makes percentage difference. Now we're joined by Liberty Nation authors Jeff Charles and Sarah Cowgill to look at two distinct voting blocks and ask if the old rules apply. Welcome, team. Hello. All right. I'm, uh, I'm excited. Good. I'm so glad, too. right? Well, well let, let's kick all. this off. Let's do it. So, Sarah, let, let's start with you. Yeah. Uh, you recently wrote uh, about the changing support of Hispanic voters. Uh, what are the details on that and what kind of difference do you think it'll make in the midterms? Well, it's made a huge difference so far, uh, it, like in Florida, for instance. Um, 20 years ago, Florida was more white uh, and less Republican, and that is absolutely the reversal now, less white, more Republican. So you're seeing that sort of takeover um, in, the, in that area. Now, those are probably a lot of people coming in from Venezuela and maybe Cuba, uh, and they have a whole different idea of democracy, and they hate communism or socialism at all costs. So you've got that demographic there. Texas has just been invaded, um, but the legal Hispanics that live in Texas and have lived in Texas for hundreds of years and have lived in New Mexico for hundreds of years, um, they're being, you know, they're under siege and they don't like illegal immigration. So they're changing their tune a little bit here and there. And it's, it's not going like, it's, it's not the most immediate, you know, flip of support but it's growing and, and it is growing consistently. So that's the big scare. I mean, you know, Hispanics are everywhere in this country. They're no longer just in the border states or, or New York City or LA or Chicago. So, you know, they're, they're everywhere. It's a big voting block and it's gonna be the biggest voting block probably by 2035. Yeah, I think you're probably right in terms of the demographic shift there, but it does seem that uh, Hispanic voters, they, they are blaming Democrats and Biden specifically for the border crisis and the influx of more uh, of, of illegal immigration. Um, and well, wait, wait, that, that's- and, and it's, it's a harder, it's a harder economy to survive mm. in. And, and, you know, that's, that's something that, I mean, the, these people may be new to our country or they may be here for generation after generation, but they understand you know, this administration is responsible for what is going on right now. Pain at the pump, pain in the grocery store. You know, your electric bill is twice as high as it was. So there's one person to blame. That's Joe Biden. And whoever Joe Biden supports, that's who they're going to go after. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a truism that uh, mass immigration not only drives down wages, but those wages that are driven down are not the uh, executive bankers on Wall Street. It's the people in the lower <laughs> socioeconomic Maybe. classes that are the most impacted by this. Now, Jeff, let's, let's shift to you. What about black voters, Jeff? Do you know any? Not a single one. <laughs> well, kidding. Jeff ain't black. Jeff ain't black. No, there's no according such to thing Joe black... Biden, he's not. Yeah. No, there's no such Joe. thing as a black voter because according to Democrats, black people can't vote because of Jim Crow 2.0. So no such thing. But Absolutely. <laughs> Jeff, I got a specific question. So we saw under, under the last guy, as uh, Joe Biden likes to say, uh, we, we saw uh, the start of a trend of black voters moving either towards the Republican Party or at least to a, an in, a more independent status. What's the latest news? Yeah, it, it's still happening, Mark, and it's happening even more. I mean, the last poll I saw showed about 21% of black voters indicating that they will they will support a Republican candidate in these upcoming elections. Um, you've got Stacey Abrams. Her black support is 79%. It should be more like 90%. Among black men in particular, it's at 75 percent. And really, black men are the ones who are kind of leading this 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 uh, this uh, exodus away from the Democrats. Now, they're not all going to vote Democrat because there's still plenty of black voters who don't who, who hate both parties. But there are more who are willing 
to give Republicans a shot. And this is a largely because Democrats have been alienating them, pushing them away. I mean, you've got progressives on TV talking down to black men in particular for not getting in line with black women to support Democrats. Yeah, that, that's, a, that, that's a very smart strategy, guys. Keep that up. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, it does. I think Democrats and progressives are only concerned about the LGBTQ plus communities, which is very, very minuscule compared it, to niche, black Americans and Hispanic yeah. Americans. If, you, if, so, you, if, you, if you've been on black Twitter for the past couple of years while the Biden administration has been in office, the biggest complaint is they've done for every other group in this country, except for the people who helped to help to get them elected. They're not forgetting that. And they're, they're seeing that Democrats really, they don't have their best interests at heart. And plus, this whole leftward lurch that the Democratic Party is doing, pushing all this woke stuff about gender identity in schools, Black people and Latinos don't rock with that. So uh, they're, they're really shooting <laughs> no, themselves no, in the no. foot. Neither do um, Muslims, apparently. Oh, you know, yes. You've got definitely. protests popping up all over the place. Muslims are like, don't teach my kids that in school. You know, so, it, seems, it seems to me, guys, that this might not even be a specific race issue. I mean, we see white voters and Asian voters also seem to be following a similar trajectory, don't they? Jeff, Sarah? I, yeah. I, I, would, I would say yes. I mean, the most stalwart uh, Trump hater that I know is now, is now saying that, you know, he can't stand Nancy Pelosi and he can't stand Joe Biden and he can't understand anything the man says. So he's done a, an absolute 180. Um, and that, and I'm just basing my thought process on that. So if I know somebody who, who was that much of a hater, who has turned the corner and, and realizes that we're, this country could be in a, in a, in a deep, deep hole, uh, other people are starting to catch on and they, they may not be vocal about it because nobody wants to be embarrassed that they, they voted, um, to retain this kind of administration, but they're still going to vote. And when they vote, they're going to probably not vote for this uh, administration. Jeff, I want you to, to come back on this. Uh, Sarah just said about uh, the country will be in a hole in 10 years. What, what do you think black voters think about that? Where do black voters see themselves in 10 years? I mean, obviously, we can't look at them as a single block. Um, sure. But what, where, where where, where, is the, where is the wish that for black voters that you know, that where they want to be politically in 10 years? Do they want to be part of a party? Do they want the, the two-party system torn asunder? What's your take? You know, yeah, they don't necessarily want, I mean, they'll complain about both parties just like we all do, but they don't necessarily want the two-party system to, to go away because, I mean, I think most people don't think that's going to happen, but really Black people want more political power. They want to be paid attention to. They they want their issues to be dealt with, and the Democrats aren't doing that. I mean, I'll, I'll use crime as an example. There was a recent mm -hmm. poll showing that 81% of Black Americans, Black voters, cited crime as one of the top, if not the top priority in these upcoming elections. But then you have Governor uh, Kathy Hochul in New York saying that this is, oh, this is just a right-wing conspiracy theory, the whole crime thing. The oh, crime has gone down under Biden. Like they want to gaslight black voters into mm -hmm. thinking that crime isn't happening in a lot of their neighborhoods. That's just one example, one of a billion examples mm -hmm. of how Democrats have been out of touch with black voters. Black, black voters want economic prosperity. They want generational wealth. The, the economy is top of mind, just like it is for everybody else. And the Democrats have not delivered. You know, this, this term top of mind, I, I'd never heard it before. It was said by Karine Jean-Pierre. It's, it's just not a thing. And I, I hate that people are making it into a real term. So final questions <laughs> for you. Just quick answers We're gonna, here. You're going to get edited, Jeff. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I understand Jeff was using it in a, in a somewhat uh, sardonic fashion. Um, so quick question for you. Quick fire answer. Uh, will Democrats blame specific voting blocks for the loss if the loss happens? Sarah? Yes, they'll blame everybody but themselves. Jeff? And they're, they're not going to single anybody out. They're going to they're going to do the laundry list. Well, if more white women living in suburbs yeah. of Atlanta had turned out, if more black people had turned out, if more Hispanics would wake up and turn out, you know, they and will, if, we, they will if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. Uh, yeah, Jeff, exactly. final word to you. The prophet Jeff Isaiah 
predicts that the two groups that they will blame the most are white women and black men. I guarantee it. From, from your lips to God's ears, uh, Jeff Charles and Sarah Calgill, thank you both ever so much for joining us. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. After this short break, we'll be back talking liberty on Justice Clarence Thomas's reaction to the affirmative action cases before the Supreme Court. Don't touch that dial. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Entertaining, informative, and just plain fun. Watch Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five. Produced by conservatives for conservatives. C5 is the left free zone. Hosted by Liberty Nation's Hi, Lisa K. Donner. Joined by a raucous, irreverent panel Maggot of authors. Friendly. Deconstructing the leftist narratives. Debating the hot, hot topics. topics. And remembering to laugh. Heard it here first. <laughs> Join the official conservative safe space. You only did that to piss Jeff off. Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five.